today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do two things. I'm going to show you how to make the liquid culture, the, in a, the agar plates. Now I'm not going to show you how to inoculate them, but just how to prep them so they can be inoculated. Um, this is a petri dish in which I've got agar agar. And I'm going to use this later to make grain spawn. This is what I'm going to use to inoculate my substrate so that we can grow some mushrooms. But before you get to this, you got to get to this. In order to get to this, um, it's helpful to buy this. This is liquid mycelium. Here I've got three different kinds. Um, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to expand it so that I have several jars of all this liquid mycelium so that I can grow it and I can use it to make slants for long-term storage. I can use it to make agar, which I can use to make this. Okay, so liquid culture. What we're aiming for, liquid culture base that we can actually inject with the liquid culture that we buy or that we clone ourselves. This here is some very happy liquid mycelium from a lion's mane that I bought from uh, Joe Foy and, and Brenda Osteen at EB Fungi. I'll put the link down in the uh, description. This is easy to make. You can do this yourself. You buy a syringe and you expand it and you can put that to agar. This is what we're gonna be making. What you're gonna need is you're gonna need a jar that's either glass or like this one that is PP5 plastic, top and container itself. You can make these. I've got another video that shows you how I make them. A um, couple different styles with the self-injection ports and a syringe filter or micro pore tape and a self-healing injection port or even polyfill. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make the liquid culture itself and get it ready to sterilize and inoculate. So what I've done so far, I've prepared my jars. I have clean lids, clean jars. Inside of those jars, I have one of these, a magnetic stir rod that works with the um, electronic stir plates. These are great. You can get them for about 30 bucks. I recommend them. Do you need that? No. Uh, you can do this. I put a marble inside and as the mycelium starts to grow, give it a little stir. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the jar on my scale. I'm going to drop in that mag that clean magnetic uh, pill that's going to be used for stirring later on. I'm going to tear the weight. Um, there's a lot of different formulas. I have for years used Honey Tech where you take um, the amount of water and you figure out 4% of the weight of your water and then you add that much honey to it. I've learned in the last year to do 50-50, 100% coconut water and water. That's what this is. We're gonna prepare these by simply doing, in this jar, I'm gonna do 300 milliliters um, total. So I'm gonna put 150 grams, not milliliters, about 150 grams of that 100% coconut water. And we're gonna do 150 grams of water. 230, 240, 250. There, so I got 300 grams. I've got my pill in there. It's a half and half mix. I've got a lid with a filter and a self-healing injection port. Boom, that's it. And the next step after I do the other two is we're gonna put it in the pressure cooker. So here's how we're going to make our agar agar. Um, it's going to start out in a liquid form and you're going to put it in the pressure cooker at 15 PSI for 20 minutes. When you pull it out, you're going to wait for that temperature to drop to about 125 to 130 degrees. I use a laser thermometer and zap the jar from about six inches away to tell the temperature. I use that then to pour uh, my agar petri dishes so that I can do cloning and testing of LC, things like that. So I'm gonna make 500 milliliters today. I've got a mason jar and a lid with a hole in it just for um, the ability for this to vent. And I'm going to need dry malt extract, agar agar powder, and water. We're gonna start here with the agar agar and we're gonna do 10 grams of agar agar. 
I'm going to do 10 grams of this dry malt extract. So what I'm going to end up with is 20 grams of the dry ingredients, 500 milliliters of water. We're going to put it in the pressure cooker. You can mix it up a little bit if you want, but it's going to mix up pretty well in the pressure cooker with all that heat and pressure. So I've got a Presto 23 quart pressure canner and I'm going to put, I've already put four quarts of water in, in here. Um, you don't want your stuff sitting in water. You want it to be steamed, sterilized. Um, I've put tin foil on top of all these. It'll kind of keep the water from going inside through the filters, getting the filters wet. So we're going to cook this now at 15 PSI for 20 minutes. I'm going to put the lid on. We're going to wait till it vents out for 10 full minutes. And then we'll put the weight on, bring it up to pressure, and that's when our timer starts. So my timer just went off. I'm turning this stove all the way off. And the pressure is going to start to decrease. You'll see this drop. This is going to stop moving here in a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this come down to zero all the way. Do not try to speed up the cooling process. Speeding up the cooling process by removing the rocker or putting this in water, it's going to cause siphoning, uh, which is, means that you're going to lose some of the liquid from your containers out of the filters, or you're going to change the temperature of the glass so fast that you're, you're going to shock the glasses and then they're going to break. Let it come down to zero all the way, and then you're going to remove this and the top wait five minutes to let it cool naturally in the thing and then you're going to pull them out and you'll start checking the temperature of your agar to get it ready to pour at that point so here's some other things you're going to need to do while your pc is sterilizing all of your meat growth medium um, now what you didn't see me do was sterilize these these are petri dishes generally i use glass that means that I, I can reuse them over and over and over again. If you find some Petri dishes that are PP5, then you can do that. Once they're done, you can um, discard um, whatever agar waste there is, wash them and use them again. Um, but these are PE um, number four. So I'll be using these just once this time. I needed a large number for a project that I'm doing. Um, in the case of the glass petri dishes, I would wash them, dry them, and wrap them in tin foil and put them in with the liquid culture. And that would sterilize them. These, when you buy them, come that way. So I don't have to do that. This is a still air box. Um, uh, if you get real serious into mycology or have money, <laughs> um, I'm somewhat serious in mycology and have no money. Um, I would, you, you could buy a laminar flow hood. Uh, that's the best way to do it, but this is the second best way. Um, you're essentially doing open air transfer um, when you're cloning or inoculating things. Um, but the still air box is very much doable. I've got a lid and the plastic tote, and I've used a Dremel tool to cut these out. I'm not going to add things like gloves because that adds suction, and this is not airtight. And when I move my gloves back and forth it creates an accordion effect that will actually suck air in and the whole point in this is to move um, fluidly but not fast and, and you've got an area here that is um, devoid of a lot of moving air when you're working in a still air box you want to be in a room where the windows are shut you don't want fans or ceiling fans or the air conditioning running because you what you want is still air because you're trying to avoid things like wild yeast and spores and other things from landing on your agar or whatever it is that you're working with I've cleaned this down with a 10% um, bleach water solution but I'll be doing all the work of pouring the plates in this still air box. Sitting at 128 now, so we're gonna go ahead and pour. I'm wearing some gloves, and I've sprayed my hands and arms down with rubbing alcohol. And I'm also wearing a mask. So I'm gonna pour these 
stack them and then put them in the plastic container until they cool. And I'm gonna fill them up about halfway each with agar. Is that, I'll put it down. One. You're just gonna to continue to do this until you've got them all poured. The reason that we wait for it to get to like 125, 128, 130, somewhere in there, is to try to cut down on the amount of condensation that happens as this agar cools. Also keeping them stacked like this will help cut down on that a little bit. So that's 500 milliliters of agar agar and we've done 20 plates. I'm just gonna let these cool and then when they can be inoculated um, when I want. Okay, so several hours later, here we are. Um, these are all at room temperature. These, um, the basis for our LC, um, the coconut water or water mix, and they've been covered and I'm gonna be inoculating each one of these with a different strain. Um, they come in plastic containers already sterilized, so I don't really have to use any sort of flame to sterilize them if I did or wanted to. I could use one of these contraptions, which is like a homemade alcohol lamp. Maybe I'll make a video on that, or you could just not be a cheapo and go buy one. Um, I'm apparently a cheapo. Basically, this is clean. I don't need a still air box or anything because everything is a closed system, but I'm still gonna do it anyway because it doesn't hurt to be clean, right? And I've washed my hands up to my elbows with soap and water and now using alcohol. I'm taking this. I'm taking my um, Agrisad um, Agerita, the Piopino. I'm going to gently uncap this. I'm going to just give that a little squirt there, a little squirt here, shake it up, make sure that mycelium's good and mixed up. I'm gonna put one cc's worth or so. There. And then I'm gonna cap it, and I'll use the rest of that later. This will go in storage in my container in the refrigerator. Um, you want to, at this point, I'm gonna stick this here, and I'm gonna stick the needle with it so I can go back and know that that is what that is inoculated with. Go on to the next one. This is Stropheria rugoso annulata. Is this a spray? Give this a spray. I'm gonna shake it up. Come into the self-healing injection port and put about one, one and a half milliliters of that LC in there. Cap it, move it, put the syringe with it. Same process. I'm gonna do one cc. I'm gonna put this here. And so now all I gotta do is label these and I'm gonna let them grow in room temperature and I'm gonna mix them up um, every couple of days once that mycelium starts to grow. That way I can easily pull it up with a sterilized syringe. And this is a golden oyster liquid mycelium after just 24 hours. One more thing here I want to show you. This is parafilm. Um, this is worth your investment. This is going to act like a filter for your plates. And so I'm going to show you real quick how to put one of these on. So I just cut one strip. There's some lines on the film. And you cut them off. And I start with most of the parafilm on the bottom. Give it just a little bit overlap on top, hold it in place. You're gonna pull and stretch. Pull and stretch. 
And when I first did this, I was using two pieces of these for every one. And it's, I still broke them and it was terrible. Pull and stretch, pull and stretch. But now I got the hang of it. You'll get the hang of it too. And then you'll have that plate with a filter that allows for air exchange and you're good to go. So that's it. Now you've got plates a bag are that you can inoculate when you're for cloning or testing your LC or whatever. And you've got the base for the LC and if it inoculated that, um, maybe we'll do an inoculation of agar on another video, but that's basically it. Thanks.